Tsuru, Tsudo, who knows? It's an old Japanese proverb that's lost all its meaning and now we're just trying to figure out what it meant in years past. Some people say super user do. I think that's a bunch of doo-doo. I think it's actually a magical word that unlocks the keys to the kingdom of Linux. And uh, today we're going to explore those keys, look at what we can accomplish as pseudo pseudo. Um, so let's start at the beginning. And in the beginning, of course, we have to look at the objective for today as we study for the RHCSA exam. Last video, we created modified deleted users, we created passwords, modified passwords, and we set the password policy. So today we're gonna configure super user access. Good stuff. What? What? I think many of you clicked this video because you just wanna know how to give somebody sudo access on a Red Hat, Alma, Rocky, Fedora, Linux machine. So I'll just quickly shebang that out so you will be happy. Uh, time is money, all of that. So user add Van Dam because every machine needs a Van Dam user. Password van dam and uh let's just give him a super secure random password uh, let's do user mod the thing that we learned in a previous video click like and subscribe ah, it's amazing You're, we're learning so much wheel so user mod append the group wheel to van dam and you're going to see why right now this pseudo now here in this file you have two options uh the, all the users in the group wheel can issue any sudo command and uh, you're going to be prompted for a password until the sudo timestamp time stamp runs out. Or if you're on a single user machine, you live alone, nobody else is using the machine, you're in the dungeon, in the basement, it's moisty. I would just recommend this option, no password. Then you can issue all sudo commands uh without being prompted so that's how you do it thank you come back again loving it what um anyways so if you want to learn more let's learn more let's prep for the rhcsa exam um so just to show you that uh van dam really has sudo access it's amazing. So now you can do sudo i login and uh, no password. So would not recommend this on anything except previous description inserted right here. Um, so where do we begin? Great question. Let's start with looking at the files that are at play. sudo doc.conf. So this file right here, you can set plugins, security, log, logging. Um, for the, the exam, you're not gonna have to mess with sudo.conf. So you just know it's there. I have relayed the information. We're all happy and go take a look at it. And another thing that I highly recommend you check out is man sudoers. Uh, this is just stunning. So it gives you a lot of examples on what to do, uh, options, it explains everything. And there is something in here that during the exam, you would probably find really interesting. And that's the thing that I'm pointed at, John and user bin password. So you might get on the exam, um, do this, but this allows something for something else so that's how you do it uh and we will cover that i just wanted to show you man sudoers really study that uh, if you need something to read before you go to sleep do that and so what's the proper way to edit the sudo errors file never ever ever do this vim etc sudoers or nano whatever floats your boat um, don't do that because actually, even though you live alone in the dungeon, in the dampness, um, 
you can actually lock yourself out of becoming sudo and if you don't know the root password you have not watched the stunning the epic video of how to reset the root password if you don't know that you are the, at the end you might as well say goodbye um so you do this sudo that's how you edit it because it does a lot of things behind the scenes it creates an uh, sudoers.tmp file it checks it validates the syntax the command lines it does a bunch of things for us so let's just check that out let's do something stupid and let's just write that um what what now syntax error so let's click enter you see the options e for edit x without saving changes quit and save changes to sudo file danger exclamation mark uh that's the danger i was talking about if you want to live on the edge be my guest use vim nano edit it like that um but the, all the cool kids they do this sudo um so that's the way you edit it let's start with some examples let's go over the different fields that we're working with here so the first one assigns the username or the group name so here we have the user root here we have the group wheel and the percentage sign tells us that we're working with the group and all means all hosts or all host groups uh, and this one means all users and the last one all commands I know this that this might be complex at first but when you've done it a bunch of times uh, you figure out the formula why it's set up like that and it just starts to click but let's jump from this sudo uh, which is actually edit editing uh, the sudo file you can see that it created the sudoers.tmp which I talked about earlier it's unchanged so nothing to report there so you also have sudoers.d which is the drop-in file location for everything that you want to like add to uh, the sudoers file so sudoers sources everything from sudoers.d everything in there is, is it drinks it in drinks it in it becomes one so i would always recommend creating drop files why well if you ever have any issues uh it's always safer to have everything in drop files and then being sourced in and it just creates a separation so uh sudo's file can become pretty long complex for um complex systems so it's just nicer to have drop-in files. Let's say you have a DevOps group that has different users. They are allowed to do certain things. Instead of putting all that mess into etc sudoers, you create a drop-in file and it's neat, 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 nice, and it's modular. We like modular. Um, so let's create a drop-in file. This sudo minus F. Uh, etc sudo uh, devops why not let's run over a few examples of what we can do but check out the link in the description down below it's for my website there is a blog for this video and uh, i go into further detail i have examples all the commands are covered it's actually just the the pinnacle of wikipedia knowledge on the interwebs but uh, let's say we have the user Willie. Remember, the first field is the user or a group. This is the user and all hosts or host groups. And then as all users, and then he can execute the command user spin. Elevated needs elevated privileges to do that. LVM. And then let's also do user bin cat. Um, so that's how we would do that. Uh, let's do cat etc sudoers permission denied bada bing bada boom but let's do sudo password uh, and then you can cat it I know stunning so uh, and also with LVM running as non root user so let's quit that let's do sudo LVM logical volume manager which we will cover later 
but now he can run that. Let's explore this savagery further. So if we would change all to root, you would, well, Willie would run these two commands as root instead of all. He has the option to run it as all users. So now he runs them as root. Um, you can as well keep adding commands ad nauseum at your heart's desire here, but that's not really the beautiful way to do it. Let's do it the beautiful way. Uh, let's start with um, user alias. Uh, let's define all the users that can execute these commands as sudo et superman. And of course, our good friend Willie. Uh, let's do host alias. Uh, let's do this computer. Let's do a SQL 01 and dev no yeah and then uh let's do command alias let's just do something like we were doing before ls so we have those three uh, aliases defined and so what happens first well it's the user of the group and oh sorry i forgot i forgot to name them hello um, user alias, uh, let's do a team, uh, let's do hosts, uh, like just my hosts, keep it simple. Uh, and then commands, why not? Um, so a team user or group that can do it on my hosts and who can run them. I'm going to just say root and then commands that's how you do it it's as easy as that is it starting to click is it starting to synchronize infuse okay let's just try this velda beast out and see what happens so clear the screen sudo minus k i'm going to clear any credentials that i have as willy uh let's do ls etc nf tables permission denied so but if he because willie can he's in he's in the 18 he can execute the ls command as sudo oh it works people so let's go back to sorry wrong, wrong password sorry so many passwords people so let's look at one more alias and that's the run as alias and then something that's probably going to be on the exam or something similar to that uh run as alias let's do db for database and let's do mysql maria db oracle see what i'm defining there is are the permissions for the a team to execute com commands as these users so my sql maria db so uh for this to make sense we would have something like this uh, user user bin my sql so they could execute my sql commands as my sql so let's also do something that uh we're close to something that's potentially going to be on the exam i don't know have not taken the exam, but let's do user um, spin user add because I want Willy to be able to create a user. Uh, let's also give the A team uh, permissions on all the hosts defined in my hosts as root, uh, run as root. Uh, let's do no password because we want to do something with no password. So you learn that as well. Uh, let's do user bin password. And they can do, for, oh, come on, A to C, uh, A to Z, A9 to zero. Sorry, I'm just talking to myself. Uh, and then, Let's also do user bin password root and let's deny them that option with the exclamation mark. So this hopefully looks good. Let's try it out. So what we are doing here. Oh, sorry. 
what's happening there run uh run run ass sorry run ass run ass <laughs> anyways um so let's do because willie can do user ad now now he just created the user et uh willie sh should be able to give uh, et a password yes he can Uh, so he could do that. Let's see if sudo password root works. No, nope, he's not allowed to execute that. So works like a charm. Um, something else that's cool to know is let's do sudo minus L. So you see everything that Willie is allowed to do. And as you can see, as you start piling on, uh, different commands, different co configs, uh, using sudoers, sudoers.d, the drop-in file location, it's going to make sense. Sorry, there was a cat just screaming somewhere around here. <laughs> so that's really all I'm going to say about sudo at the moment. Just check out the blog. There's going to be more stuff there. I hope this was entertaining, informational, and that we are one step closer to the RHCSA certification. Talk to you later. Bye.